I am grateful to Sister Grace Duke, the Mother Superior of Lovers of Holy Cross in Los Angeles, for inviting me to do this reflection to get connected with you young people. And I want you to know that I'm honored to be with you. Before I share with you my reflection on St. Joseph, allow me to give you my brief remark about my relationship with St. Joseph. I had belonged to St. Joseph congregation in Vietnam from 1966 to 1979, 13 years with that religious community by the name St. Joseph. One of the parishes I serve in Jacksonville is St. Joseph Parish and I served there as a pastor for almost four years. My coat of arm has a flower of lily symbolizing St. Joseph and my bishop staff has the image of St. Joseph. Recently, one of the Vietnamese parishioners from St. Nicholas Parish donated a statue of St. Joseph and places him at the front of my suite. And I love it because every time I come and go, I greet him and I ask, ask him to help me, to lead me to his son Jesus. Now, I have an opportunity to share with you about my reflection about St. Joseph. Ho oh, ho! I hope that uh, you are happy with me as I'm happy with you. So let us begin with the Gospel reading. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. At that point, the Spirit sent him out toward the desert. He stayed in the wasteland forty days put to the test there by Satan. He was with the wild beasts and angels waited on him. After John's arrest, Jesus appeared in Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. This is a time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Reform your lives and believe in the gospel. The word of the Lord. You and I are in the season of Lent, and the gospel that you and I have just heard was read on the first Sunday of Lent. It is the story of Jesus entering into the desert. Why the desert? Because the desert is such a basic, unforgiving place. You are as close to the edge of life and death as you could possibly be. No access, no luxury, no distraction, no TV set, no microwaves, no car, no cell phone, no YouTube, no Facebook, nothing except an utter silence. Yes, silence is what we experience in the desert. And so when the church has the month and the feast of St. Joseph during the season of Lent, it is because the church wants us to look to St. Joseph and learn from him the value of silence in our spiritual life. Indeed, St. Joseph is a silent man in the Bible. St. Joseph does not speak one word in the scripture, no word, and yet he spoke powerfully through his action. And what did he do? St. Joseph did as the angel of the Lord had commanded, not once, but three times. Joseph responds with action. He respond tell us that he was a man of faith. And that is my first part to share with you. Saint Joseph, a man of faith. Joseph was silent, but this silence does not mean that Joseph was not disturbed by Mary's surprise pregnancy. Indeed, it took the visit of an angel in his dream to console him. Now Pope Benedict XVI remarks to trust God does not mean to see everything clearly according to our criteria. It does not mean to carry out what we have planned. To trust God means to empty ourselves, to deny ourselves. Because one, only one who accepts losing himself for God can be just as St. Joseph. That is, can conform his own will to God's and thus be fulfilled. St. Joseph showed his strong faith in God in his way of responding to the angel commands. And three times, like I said earlier, first, 
God called him to take Mary as his wife because it is by the Holy Spirit that Mary has conceived the child. No question, no how, no when, just did it. Second time, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt because God Herod is searching for the child to destroy him. No question, no how, no when, just did it. Then the third time, get up, take the child and his mother and set out for the land of Israel. Those who had intended to destroy the child are dead. Again, no question, no how, no when, just did it. And St. Joseph's action tells us that he put his total faith in God and did what the angel told him. And you know what? With this strong faith, he was able to see the Holy Spirit working miraculously in Mary's life. With this strong faith, he was able to see God working wonderfully in the sharing of the three king and the shepherd when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But m more importantly, he was able to see in the baby born Jesus in Bethlehem, not an ordinary baby, but a Savior, a God of Emmanuel, a God with us, the Son of God. In other words, he looked beyond what he saw and fathomed the mystery of God's love. God so loved the world that he sent his son. And as you know, this baby Jesus grew up and preached the good news of God's love. Jesus practiced that love by way of reaching out to the poor and fed them, reaching out to sinners and forgave them, reaching out to the lonely and accompany them. And this love reached its climax on Calvary. No greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. So young people learn from St. Joseph's faith to trust that in Jesus we come to believe that our God is a God of love. Yes, God loves us. God loves you, no matter where you come from and what you are doing. It doesn't make any difference whether girls or boys or rich or poor or pretty or ugly, or handicapped or no handicap, blue eyes, black eyes, red eyes, cross eyes, no matter. God loves you just the way you are. Why? Because God created you in his own image. And God sees himself in you. No wonder Isaiah proclaimed in his book, You are precious in my eyes and I love you. And the powerful proof that God loves you is the crucifixion. And who is hung on the cross? Jesus, the Son of God, who died on the cross for your salvation. God loves you that much. And the second thing that you need to learn from St. Joseph's faith, and that is to see the presence of God in the ordinary things in our everyday life. And for that, I'd like to share with you the story of Edward Skillerback, a famous theologian. You know, when he joined the Dominicans early on, they had to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, like the monks, and they would go to the choir, and chant the office. Young man that he was, just having entered the seminary, this lovely monastic rising in the hours to sing God's praises, quite capture his imagination and thus apart from the noise and busyness of the world and he fell so close to God. So in his enthusiasm, he wrote to his father, how wonderful it feels to be praising God when all the world around me is asleep and I and my fellow seminarian are giving glory to God. And you know what? His father wrote back and he was glad that his young son appreciated his new monastic life. But he should remember that when he was an infant, he's one of the 13 children. His parents, too, were up at 2 a.m. And yes, they, too, were giving glory to God, although they weren't quite singing the psalm. And, you know, 2 a.m. bottle. 
of milk. We tend to go with the Dominican, not with the Father. Get thee to the monastery and you will find God. But his father said, no, it is in everydayness of life that we uncover God even if we do not realize it at the time. Let me share with you a short poem. Now in this poem, God is talking. I am the great son, but you don't see me. I am your husband, but you turn away. I am the captive but you do not free me. I am the captain, you will not obey. I am the truth, but you will not believe me. I am the city, but you will not stay. I am your wife, your child, but you will leave me. I am the God to whom you will not pray. I am your counsel, but you do not hear me. I am your lover, you will betray. I am the victor, but you do not cheer me. I am the holy dove whom you will slay. I am your life, but if you will not name me, seal up your soul with tears and never blame me. The point is to discover God in the ordinary things in our life. Learn from Saint Joseph to experience God in the nature, to encounter God in the sacrament we celebrate, and to see God's image in the people whom we meet every day, especially the poor and the needy. And from that experience, we will grow in our faith in the God who loves us so much that He sent His Son to die on the cross for us. So whoever believes in Him may not die, but may have eternal life. Now, second part that I'd like to share with you is St. Joseph, a patron of worker. St. Joseph was a man of silence and yet he spoke powerfully in his action as a worker and that is why the church has an annual feast St. Joseph the worker on May 1st. Now St. Joseph is a patron of worker because he recognized gifts God has given him and out of gratitude to God he shared those gifts for the service of Christ for the service of Holy Family and for the service of the needs of local community. Following Joseph's example, you and I are called to put our gifts in the service of others. You young people, you are gifted. Why do I say that? Because God created you in His own image and God created you with gifts. So don't tell me that you don't have gifts. Everyone has gifts. It doesn't make any difference whether handicapped or no handicapped. Everyone has gift of time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right? And everyone is able to love and to be loved, right? I am sure you have more gift than that. Intelligence, social skill, athletic skill, pretty, handsome, those are God's gift given to you. So you must be grateful to God for those gifts, like St. Joseph. And out of your gratitude to God, you share those gifts to others. And gifts need to be shared. Let me give you, give you an example. I have a special gift of priesthood. Let me ask you, do you allow me to use that gift to say Mass privately in my bedroom? Well, I don't see you, but I'm sure that some of you shaking your heads, Bishop. You should say Mass publicly. I agree with you. Besides, saying Mass by myself is weird. The Lord is with you and nobody responds. Boring. You get my point. You too need to share your gifts for the service of others. To join youth group. To get involved in the parish life. All the service. Eucharistic ministry. Lectures. I'm sure your pastor will have some job for you. And of course, you can use your gift to reach out to the poor and needy in your midst. You know, when I remember when I was in Jacksonville, my youth group get together on a monthly basis, on the first Saturday, to go to abortion clinic, to pray the rosary, to pray for the conversion of those who plan for abortion, 
and those who serve abortion. Also, every year, they get together in a nursing home around Artman before Christmas to visit the elderly and to sing Christmas carols. And you know what? The senior citizen was so happy about that. Oh, you can do that, right? Just some example. And I'm sure you young people are very creative in thinking many ways to use your gift for the service of others. St. Joseph's labor was a mirror of God's labor. Because if you read in the book of Genesis, what do you hear? You hear the story of creation, right? On the first day, God walks. On the second day, God walks, creating heaven and earth. On the third day, God walks. On the fourth day, and the fifth day, and the sixth day, God walks to create Adam and Eve. And so from Genesis to Revelation, God constantly walks throughout human history. And right now, He is walking to create this world a better place. You and I are created in that image of walking God. You and I are called to share our gifts to co-create with God to make this world a better place. A place of hospitality, a place of joy, and a place of love. Saint Joseph is a good example for that.